This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Welcome to another episode of SmackDown, where we're gonna be comparing Adobe's Creative Suite to Affinity's design products to see which one is gonna come out on top. Hello, my name is Brad. I review tech for creative professionals. If we're gonna have these two competitors duke it out, we're gonna need some rules. So here's what we're dealing with. Rule number one. I make up a bunch of categories like price and features and updates and how easy they are to learn. And then I pull my panel of esteemed experts. Okay, fine. I choose the categories myself. But then at the end, I tally up all the votes. See who did better and declare an all-time winner for the ages. That's it. It's done. Very scientific. But for real, I, I use and love both of these products. Don't, don't tell Adobe that. I'm using Premiere right now to make this video. Anyway. Let's get on with this. Okay, let's talk about the giraffe in the room, price. So years back, Adobe switched from a buy your software model to a rent your software model. And reading the comments on any video where I talk about Adobe in any capacity, that's the real beef people have with Adobe. Every software app ever is going to have bugs. Every software app ever is going to have some kind of limitation, but when you're paying a premium for your software, yeah, expect it to be a little better. But something to keep in mind is Adobe software is just as expensive now as it was before they switched over to that model. It's just now you're paying $50 a month instead of paying hundreds of dollars every year, year and a half. And the reason this video exists and that Affinity has gotten their foot in the door as a competitor is because Adobe switched to this model and because Adobe's software is so expensive to begin with. And people really like the idea of owning their software. So it's pretty clear that the, the winner from a price slash value standpoint here is going to be Affinity. Surprise! But with that said, there are some caveats to this, which I want to get into with this next category, the software ecosystem. If all you need is photo editing, design, illustration, layout tools, Affinity is great. But when we start looking at the Creative Suite and everything that's included in it, it's clear that Adobe has a far more robust ecosystem going on here. You have video editing tools like Premiere, you have After Effects, you have Adobe Animate, you have Adobe XD, which is an interface design app for designers who are creating websites, or apps, there's even Adobe's 3D collection with something like Substance. So if we're just looking at the scope, Adobe is the clear winner here, but there are a lot of benefits beyond just the software that comes with an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription. One that I use the heck out of and have for years is Adobe Typekit. Although they stopped calling it Typekit years ago, I think now it's called Adobe Fonts or Adobe Type. What it does is it gives you access to literally hundreds of really good typefaces. And yes, yes, I know there's a lot of free fonts that you can go online and find on the internet. No problem. But man, trust me, as a professional designer, I can tell you a good font is just amazing. Adobe also has some other features that come with the plan. Sometimes they don't like Adobe stock photo that doesn't come with the plan unless you upgrade, pay more on a monthly basis. There's also Adobe's cloud storage plan that does come with the base Creative Cloud plan, that could be really handy if you're working with a team and wanna share files. So for this category, I'm going to go with Adobe. There is just so much more here than just a handful of applications. Before I get to the next category, I do wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. Probably already know that Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building the ultimate website for your brand or business, but it's also one of the best ways to engage with your audience. Squarespace has member areas. This makes it easy for creators to monetize their content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to things like gated content videos, online courses, or even newsletters. And you can customize all of this to fit your brand with Squarespace's best-in-class website templates. Browse the category of your business to find the perfect starting place. And see how well your business is performing with Squarespace's analytics. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from. And analyze which channels are the most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on top keywords and the most popular products and content. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial. When you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Brad Colbo to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Next up, I want to talk about software updates. One thing Adobe has always done really well is constantly add new features to all of their software products. Some of those features are a hit, 
Some are a miss, but they're always trying something new. They've rolled out a lot of mobile apps. Again, some of them a hit, some of them a miss, but they are constantly trying and constantly releasing new things. Affinity feels a lot more deliberate about the release schedule and, and what they are putting out there. They started with Affinity Photo and then Affinity Designer and most recently Publisher at first with photo, they focused really on the Mac app before rolling it out to Windows. And then we've seen them since then start to roll out their apps for the iPad. And they're not just like, hey, let's port these things over to the iPad. They've been really focused on creating an amazing interface designed just for the iPad. So with Affinity, we don't see as many new features as often because those core features are already in there and they work great, they're working on building out their portfolio and moving their software to other platforms. Adobe, on the other hand, is a huge corporation, so they can really dig deep and do some serious R&D that smaller companies just can't afford. A good example of this would be what Adobe's been doing with AI and machine learning in recent years. They have a ton of photos that they can analyze and so they can make better auto masking features, they can replicate whole areas of textures in a photo and just mask it out. Most recently in Premiere, they've added auto captioning. So it analyzes your video, figures out what you're saying and creates a set of captions for your video automatically. It ain't perfect, but it does 90% of the work for you. And that's kind of awesome. These are the things that take scale and Adobe has that scale and the ability to invest in them. A lot of the things they're making today are gonna make our jobs easier in the future. So again, for this category, Adobe, Congratulations. The next category, I wanna talk about quality. And this is a weird one because personally, I've run into more bugs in Adobe software than I've seen in say, using Affinity software in the last few years. But I'm sure if you go online, you're gonna find folks who've had the exact opposite experience. It's just such an anecdotal thing, what your personal experience is. It's hard to judge which software is a higher quality and works better. So instead, I wanna pivot a little bit and, and talk about how the software feels when it's shipped. Adobe makes a lot of things, but it often feels rushed or a lot of the features feel like they're just being thrown against the wall to see what sticks. Photoshop for the iPad is probably the best example of this in recent years. For a while, there were a whole bunch of different Photoshop mobile apps and each one did its own like specialized little function. A few years ago, Adobe decided to scrap all of those and say, hey, we we were launching real Photoshop for the iPad. And when it launched, it was nowhere near feature complete. Now when Affinity Photo launched for the iPad, it had like 90% of the features that you find in the desktop app. And they did this years before Photoshop with a fraction of the resources and budget. And as they update the desktop app, most of those new features that they're rolling out there are also rolling out at the same time for their mobile apps. And when you look at these two companies, I would expect that to be reversed. I would expect Adobe to have the resources to pull that off and not a little upstart like Affinity. So even though Affinity doesn't have as many updates and as many features rolling out at a consistent pace, the quality of what they do launch feels so much more solid and finished. So this category, I'm giving it to Affinity. All right, my last category, I'm gonna talk about community. Now, something I used to hear a lot back in the day when I first started using Affinity Designer was, well, yeah, that's great, but there's thousands of tutorials for Adobe Illustrator out there, and there's like four for Affinity Designer. Back then, the community or ecosystem that supported these apps was just overwhelmingly in Adobe's camp. Time has changed that, and, and I'm sure there are probably still more Adobe tutorials available in the world than there are Affinity tutorials. But nowadays, if you want to learn something, there are plenty of Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo tutorials out there to learn from. Adobe's also been upping their game in their learning and resources category. If you look at the mobile apps like Adobe Fresco or Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop for the iPad, each one of those apps has a bunch of learning tutorials already inside of it that are really good tutorials that teach you how to use the new features that they've rolled out in their app. Adobe also has Behance. They're doing live streams on their YouTube channel. They're talking to pros on a regular basis and putting out a lot of amazing tutorial content as well. This one is also a little bit anecdotal, but the passion of the Affinity community seems to be a little bit stronger than it is with Adobe. It seems to be a little, it's smaller, it's cozier, it's more friendly. If you ask a question on an Affinity forum, you're gonna get people who are really passionate about the software, who really wanna help you because 
they're passionate and they want you to be passionate and they want you to use their software, the software they love. And when you're learning that kind of one-on-one -on -one interaction and great feedback cycle is huge. So this category, uh, I could go either way with this one. I, I think for this one, I'm gonna go with Adobe for this category. It's so close. Even though the vibe I get from Affinity's community is stronger, Adobe has really taken some time and energy and put resources into their community in recent years to make those learning resources really good. And I think that's a great thing. I think what really stands out to me when I look at these two different sets of products the real winner is us. That sounded really corny, but it's true. I think having this competition has really pushed both of these companies to do better and do really good things. And having more options at more price points is good for all of us. 10, 15 years ago, I was a designer. I was designing websites and doing stuff like that. And at the time, Adobe was the only player in town. Now, in pretty much every category, whether we're talking about the design apps that we talked about today with Affinity, there's some great stuff out there. If we're talking about video editing, we've got Final Cut Pro. That was around a while ago. There's DaVinci Resolve, which is really good. Category by category, you can go down the list and you can find competitors who are producing great stuff. But what do you think? Let me know down below in the comments. Who is the winner to you? Thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you in a couple of days.